da, da. Right, how am I looking in the framing? I don't know. It's good. It's good. Yeah, cool. So I'm being directed today by Dave because I can't see my own screen. Um, so I have it on good authority that I'm in good stead right now. Uh, and it's a lot of light coming in from the window, to be fair. Well, it's almost artistic. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Well, that, yeah, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. Um, so, uh, which is, it, it's a terrible time for this to happen because I'm actually going to be presenting today's episode. But, uh, but regardless of the fact, in uh, the audio format, this is totally irrelevant. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so as long as I just stay still and kind of perpendicular to the camera, we're good. <laughs> so, so um, as I said, I am presenting today, and part of the reason I'm presenting today is because we've come up with a new format. Anyone who listened to the last episode mm. will um, have heard um, the 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 uh, inception yeah. of the idea. It's uh, it was basically a conversation we we're having that spawned into going, "Oh, that could make a really good format for an episode. Let's try it." Lo and behold, here we are. So, this is the oh. premise of the show we each are armed with a film that we as a collective are going to recast in today's modern heap of celebrities heap. so where it would be that's the collective uh, celebrities, Ryan. It's a heap. <laughs> where it would be michael j fox in back to the future it is now Tom Holland, as everyone's seen with the uh, that face. Oh, swap. the face swap thing. So yeah. things like that would uh, would be what we're basically coming up with. So Jesus Christ, what is wrong That's with you? <laughs> why are you so? Why are you bitching? <laughs> now he's just rubbing himself on a wire. It's going in. Here he is. Hey. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? That very much reminds me of the the meme. Oh Lord, here he comes! <laughs> Good Christ, he's such a child. Ow! <laughs> oh, wow! Right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the the idea basically came about originally when I mentioned how um, over the years I have considered uh, my perfect cast for the Hunchback of Notre Dame live action remake uh because it's inevitable it's going to happen at some point and i thought to myself maybe i can get ahead of the get curve here maybe i yeah. could be the the nina gold of of the hunchback of notre dame disney live action remake so um over the years i guess <laughs> i think yeah we'll start with that one just to get everyone back into so it what, um what five are we doing right so five quasimodo match 100 percent, we're going to do it yeah, we're gonna do it. Esmeralda, also, yeah. Frollo, Judge Claw, Frollo, yeah. And uh, Phoebus, okay. And that's, I think, that's the four realistically. Yeah, if you put if you put in the three gargoyles, we're up to too many, aren't we? Yeah, but the gargoyles, I think, if we can we think, could do of, if we got like, yeah, if we can a, think a of funny a, trip, a like, trio, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, uh, we, can that, we can chuck in as well for sure. Yeah. Um, we'll focus on so, those. Uh, I'm going to start by just throwing out the first name. I'm going to do a Quasimodo here. Starting with the title uh, character. Starting with the title, the titular Hunchback. Mm. Um, so, my inspiration for who I would cast comes from the fact that um, in the past we have had um, Hunchback and Notch Darm live action films. We've also had films like The Elephant Man, in which these uh, prestigious actors or actors uh, get kind of covered in prosthetics. Uh, and have to act that way. Um, prosthetic, I would be more uh, intrigued about than CGI. I wouldn't want like a, a beast uh, yeah. in the beast kind of CGI character. But, but, yeah, want... but you'd want prosthetics, but enhanced by CGI, wouldn't you? you oh want yeah, 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 that like... was blended via CGI. Yeah, yeah, because so, yeah. there's mean. like the, there's the Hunchback of Notre Dame live action where it's like one of his yeah. eyes never closes because it is just a prosthetic eye and it's just like yeah. always open. It looks awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, CGI to like combo of the two. So, realistically, it comes down to the fact that um, the character of Quasimodo is only like 17, 18, I think, in the, uh, he is in the young. film or in the realms of the story. Um, 
So I thought, okay, so young actor needs to be able to sing, um, has to have quite. So uh, we're recasting the Disney musical version then. Literally the musical version. Okay. Same film, live action. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for Taron Egerton. Yeah. I mean, no, I saw that one coming. It's, uh, <laughs> I think it, at this moment in time, it's like the only choice, unless anyone else has uh, something better. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. You need somebody who can do quite a physical performance. Mm. It, it has to be very physical. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think Rocket Man proves that that's uh, musically is something he can do as well as the action movie uh, type of physicality. He can definitely do the kind of musically charged physicality as well. So I think it's cut and dry, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) Sort of ruins Uh, the format if you don't. (laughs) Yeah, I just I just I just wonder if anyone's going to be able to say anyone better than Taron Egerton. For Quasimodo, he is a very good actor. It's a good choice, and you got to always take into account the singing aspect. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think of that. It's hard to know. You've got to find an actor, but then you also got to find someone well that we know can sing, mm-hmm. and that's that narrows the field down even further. Yeah, can Channing Tatum sing, or is he just a dancer? Don't I don't. I've never. Heard I think he's too good looking, though. Yeah, uh, well, that doesn't yeah. matter. Taron Egerton's pretty good looking, to be but honest. But he's not like classically. He's got a bit of like roughness to him. <laughs> <laughs> like Channing Tatum's very even, clean. even better, right? Even uh, better. Channing Tatum's very clean, like classically handsome. Channing Tatum's got a bit more of like a bit more rough. You know what I mean? Like he's got his, <laughs> his head slightly potato shaped. It's sort of slightly. He's not perfectly symmetrical. Okay. Whereas Channing Tatum's a bit too. Perfect. I, lo- I like how when we're discussing who should play Quasimodo, looks are an important factor. <laughs> well, they, no, it is. I think it is. It's that, that's the whole. What's the whole? The whole film is based on his looks. Mm-hmm. What's the point of the film? Oh, yeah, but we're yeah, but... talking about adding prosthetic. Yeah, but we're adding yeah. prosthetic to a face. You need a good canvas. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just. You know, some people don't look good in prosthetics. Okay. Channing Tatum, I don't think would. To be it fair, too the, comical. The prosthetic ears he had in uh, Jupiter Ascending were very funny. So <laughs> I can he doesn't. Think yeah, funny. you need a good face to start with. You can't just plop prosthetics on anything. You need a good. Yeah. Well. So I, no to Channing Tatum is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say no. <laughs> so various reasons. I'm just trying to think of more people anyone to else. Yeah. Uh, I also. I it's also trying to think clear that like Callum's the had too much time to think about this. Yeah. <laughs> I think also about the build, and I feel like people yeah, like they need to be like, like the Tom Hollands and all that. They're a little bit too skinny. Yeah, uh, they need to be stocky. Taron's a little bit more stocky, and I think that, that really squat. helps. Yeah. Can yeah. you imagine if we got Tom Holland for it and he actually piled on the pounds? I like, mean, he went if he to could, every single fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> he really beefed up for the role. Can you imagine that? Um, right? I'm trying Please. to think. Um, the guy, I don't know if he can sing. This is the thing. Mm. Um, the the older brother from Stranger Things. What's his name? Can't remember his name. He's also in New Mutants. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he could. He's, he's got a similar uh, look. To, they look similar as people. There's a, there's a modelable face there. There's definitely yeah. a face that again. You I don't know if he can sing. Up. Yeah, don't know if he can sing. Yeah, I also think maybe he's a bit too tall and a bit too... Uh... I, don't, I don't know, I've never really... I don't know. I don't know how tall Taron Egerton is off the top of my head. He just... Because I think he's a bit stockier, a bit he wide. It makes him look shorter. I don't yeah. know. Either. But he might be quite tall. Yeah. I don't know. I don't he's know. He's about 5'8". Okay. That, I think that's I that's guess. classic Quasimodo size. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> the height you want. That's a, with a bit of a hunch. There you go. That's, that, that's getting him down to 5'5". Five five. Yeah, so there we go. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, so Settled. I can't argue oh. against it if I'm honest. <laughs> so oh, phone up his agents. <laughs> yeah. So Taron Egerton is Quasimodo. Now let's have a think about Esmeralda. Esmeralda. So, Esmeralda, the 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 queen, the the 
the Che Guevara of the gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's the leader. Yeah, but she is. Not, she's not. What's that? Clip clop or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, she's and like I, the. She, she's the actual the spiritual leader. Yeah. But due to, uh, you know, the sexist nature of the society, she's not the leader. Indeed. So we would want uh, a, a sort of gypsy. Yeah, you'd want something. You need it to be like culturally or racially similar. Yeah. yeah. Which is hard because gypsy isn't a specific. Well, they are. They're Romani gypsies, though, aren't they? In this, yeah. In this, that's because it's quite. Yeah. So that's it's Roman. It's, very, it's a weirdly specific part of the Europe that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but does exist spread out into various different countries. So typically, what would a Romani gypsy look like? Well, Mediterranean looking. Mediterranean. Sort of, they're not named after Rome. They're named after Romania. Yeah. So it's that area. Yeah. Um, sort of not Greece, north of Greece, sort of that that bit. Um, okay. Okay. That's where you'd want well, to go. And what what are we saying? Or someone terms... with that heritage, not necessarily from those, but someone with, you know. Yeah. What are we saying about her age as well? I'd say, I'd, I would, I, from the Disney version, she looks to be in her 20s. I would agree. I would Possibly agree. Possibly younger. That, you could lock it down a bit. Makes it, makes it she's seem she's older a, as well. But she might just be a young woman thrust into maturity due to life. So for that purpose, why don't we say twenties? Like just yeah, twenty around 20s. the twenties. Um, who's about? Who's about? Who's about? And who could do? It? Needs to be able to sing. Needs to be able to dance. Needs to be like pretty sexy. Uh, I've got potential. She's not big. Oh. She's not big, and I can't remember her name. I'm gonna have to quickly look her up. But she was in. <laughs> she was in the Eurovision film. Okay. Oh, Rachel the... McAdams, of course. No, not Rachel <laughs> McAdams. I think she's the. I think she is Greek because she oh. also voiced Cassandra in the Assassin's Creed Odyssey game. So That's she's right. Greek. Yeah, yeah oh, Dan um, Stevens. <laughs> yeah, Dan Stevens. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Um, but she's the Greek entry in Eurovision film, so she can sing mm. because uh, she okay. sings. Um, That's good. That's good. Thank you. I can't remember a name. I've got a bit of a weird flex, actually. Go on. Gal Gadot. That could, Gal yeah, Gadot. No, that, that would work. I, I wonder if she may be a bit too old. Or too bit... tall. Or no. too... <laughs> Esmeralda was tall, though, but she was sitting yeah. next to Cosimodo a lot, so that's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably not I think... that tall. Yeah. Uh, well, I have... if, we're, if we have her standing next to Taron Egerton, then, yeah. I'm trying to find her name. I have uh, issues. Melissa, Melissantha Mahout. Melissanthi? Okay. Melissanthi Mahout. Perfect. Okay. She is Greek. She hasn't got a Wikipedia page. She's new blood. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, that's good because I like the idea of having have... to uh, drop someone with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I would like that idea, though, like introducing, mm. like, mm. A, an yeah. upcoming Yeah. Like an introducing. To... Yeah. Um, I mean, she probably only came into mind because of recent. Um, recently seen her and stuff, so that's yeah. probably why. But she fits yeah. the sort of geographic requirement, sort of. Mm-hmm. So yeah. close as you're gonna get. I just had a thought. I, I I've just really I've, I've just thought of a Disney darling, because uh, because Disney films love to keep their little cliques together with their mm. their Josh Gads and their Tom Hollands. Um, Zendaya. Yeah. Could Zendaya. Do. Dance too young. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know how old she is. It's probably about time that she had a role that aged her up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you watch Euphoria, where she's doing drugs and banging people, yeah, different. You know, in Spider Man, you're like, oh, look how kooky she is. You know, I mean, like, I think (laughs) we're just used to her in yeah, slightly dour things. Makes her younger. I think she is actually a little bit more age appropriate than that. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Possible, possible. Yeah, I I do like the idea of um of the the up and coming actor though, as opposed yeah. to the famous actor already. So, I don't yeah. know what she looks like, but I would be more than game for it to be her. She looks Mediterranean. Is she gorgeous? She's pretty. She's good looking. Okay. She's like she's in the film. She takes the role of like she starts off being 
like the evil one and she tries to seduce Will Ferrell. That's sort of her role. Spoilers. Okay. All right. Um, well, you so have she, to be able to seduce Will Ferrell. Yeah, so. he's got a high standard. So, yeah, she, she plays the seductress role very well. So she's got that about her. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Right. Melisanthi right. Mahout. Mahat Mahout. I don't know how to say it. But... Okay. I, I would be inclined to give it to her. That sounds Lovely. fun. That sounds nice. Interesting. We've got a new a newcomer, which is nice to see. Newcomer. Well, re- re- up and comer. Yeah, much like uh, they had Aladdin most recently. That was yeah, a they, yeah. coming actor, um, yeah. surrounded by uh, more famous actors. Bigger ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a good way around. Sometimes doing that. Um, right. So, who do you want to do next? Should we go evil or or good? Should we do Frollo let's, or let's Feeble? Go evil. Let's, let's go, go evil. Yeah. Let's go evil. Frollo. If any, if people at home haven't seen Hunchback and Notch Down, this is going to be well boring, isn't it? It They'll is. Just be like, I don't know who any of these people are. I think even if they haven't seen the Hunchback and Notch Down, they know enough about it. Yeah, they, they, they know that. like what the characters. They know who Quasimodo is. Yeah. yeah, and if you haven't seen it, watch it. You madman, <laughs> madman. <laughs> so um, for, for those people, context: Frollo is what is he? Is he, a, is he in the church? He's a member of the church, isn't he? He's yeah. the guy who takes the one ring to Mordor. Nice. <laughs> He's like the, I don't know the equivalent would be, he's like a bishop or something like that. A pastor? <laughs> yeah, something like that. He's in the church. Yeah. And he... Archbishop. <laughs> yeah, he's the bad guy. He doesn't like Cosimodo and he wants, and he, he's in love with Esmeralda, essentially. Right, yeah. yeah. So he's a very he's a very complicated character. He He both despises, but is also very sexually attracted to gypsies. Um, yeah. the re- part of the reason it's true, it's, it's mm, crazy. Yeah. In the film, there's like the, the sequence where he sings Hellfire, it is literally about him saying, like If you don't let me fuck you, I'm going to burn you Kill, with fire. Yeah. So Either way, you've got those are your two choices. It's really, it's crazy, it's crazy. So, yeah. it has to be someone with that kind of intensity. Um, also, he's supposed to be a bit like a lot older and yeah, so he's creepy. Old yeah, um, god. Mm. How would this even actually like? How would they even be able to put this in a Disney film now? I don't even think they would. Yeah, they would, but I mean, in, it's not only looking back now. Is it sort of, that, that song "Hellfire" is still very metaphorical? It doesn't like overtly say it. As a child, I, you didn't go, "Oh, he wants to have her." You just went, I "Oh, he's know. doing a scary song about fire." No, I don't know. <laughs> when I was younger, I kind of picked up on the fact that he he wanted to bang her hard. Really? Yeah, maybe not in those words. But <laughs> maybe that. I think that might be your your mind. When I was three years old, seeing that film for the first time in cinema, like, I was like, "He's gonna rag her." <laughs> Christ. Um, uh, um, no. I think the no. yeah the the more sort of in depth, such like underlying subplots aren't they're not overt. Mm. I think as a child, I didn't think that. I think I think I think part of the reason I think I it went, is oh, it's a little bit more him. overt. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit more overt than a lot of the other Disney films, but yeah. still not yeah. over, like, completely overt. So maybe no. that's why I feel like it's a bit heavy. But D- Disney uh, films, you know, yeah. they tackle I'm all sorts of nonsense. To be honest, I don't remember the film too well. Is he an overt, sinister evil, or has he got more of a character? He, did, he starts off, type? no, he starts off sort of like... It's kind of like... Uh, he starts off like a priest, and yeah. then he descends. Yeah, okay. there, there's he an element of like... More. Munchausen, is it Munchausen? He basically like likes the idea of keeping Quasimodo scared and and yeah. alone, um, and he does it very sneakily. Um, that is, that is using fear tactics and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, okay, and then as it goes I, on, he does like nasty evil. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna throw out a Richard E. Grant. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That'd work. I like that. That would be good. The, the be names good. I've always heard thrown out in the in the like in over time have always been like Liam Neeson. Um, yeah. But I've always I've always found that Liam Neeson uh, don't, I, doesn't quite fit for me. No, he's, he's not grand he, enough. The trouble is Liam Neeson is actually too recognisable. Yeah, maybe. True. I maybe. think Richard E. Grant's a fucking shout, mate. Yeah, yeah. He even looks a bit like how... the character animated <laughs> yeah. character. Yeah, I don't know if he can sing. Um, that, that, he's, he's a multi threat, surely. You could get away with not having a great singer. Yeah, that song isn't like a 
yeah. belt it out song. It's very much a performance, yeah. like yeah. it's a character song rather than I think, I think it, Grant could train for a couple yeah, of easily. and have a he, I think he's been about, he's sung even something. if he hasn't done it before. Yeah. Yeah. But. No, I agree. I think I agree. I think that's a really good shout. And I think, yeah, it need, the, the voice needs to be have gravitas, doesn't yeah. necessarily need to be in tune. And I think Richard yeah. Grant does a pretty uh pretty good voice uh for the character i think you know what i think you i think you know that hit the nail on the head i, think <laughs> hit the nail on the fuck, yeah. right. I can't think of a better option uh the other one that was going in my head was ben mendelson but that feels a bit obvious. oh yeah almost. mendelson yeah. i think maybe he's a bit too yeah. uh, a bit too short um i like the idea of like taller and spindlier yeah um, weirdly focused on height yeah, I, I I really am. I, I want it to. It's be important. Like a... I understand. <laughs> yeah, but as a director, yeah. you have to know where your actors are going to be on screen. Yeah. <laughs> True. I like. But I like. With, uh, you know, the the Tim Burton aesthetic where people are like either really short and stout or like long and spindly. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's um, no there's no average height people in this film. They're always <laughs> really tiny or massive. I'll tell you who will get as an average height bad boy. Is Phoebus? He's going to be the most. If anything, I saw him is quite short. Ah, he's <laughs> I'm just be. fucking with you. I think I think we've locked it down so far. So yeah, currently we have Taron Edgerton, Quasimodo, Richard E. Grant, Frollo, the girl that Ryan said, yeah, Esmeralda. <laughs> And now we just need Phoebus and maybe the gargoyles if we can. Yeah, if we can think of a, if we can think of like a, a trip, like a trip set of three that we can just bung yeah. together rather than yeah. casting them into the gargoyles. You could probably do a classic Seth Rogen, James Franco, Michael Sarah or something. <laughs> <laughs> that work started and then just went, oh fuck it, Michael Sarah. Yeah. I think. Like, uh, <laughs> I think is it most... one... maybe oh, Dave Franco? Oh. Maybe the two Francos and Seth Rogen. I yeah. feel I feel like one of them is a woman though, right? One of the gargoyles is a female. So. I, I thought the really, so. the really old one that like. No, he's, no, he's voiced by um, very much a man. Yeah, I know, but I, f- I still feel like the, the character is supposed to be female. Well, we're on Phoebus. Let's not get distracted. Okay. Make, yeah. There's nothing stop us from making it a female. Yeah. No, we could. We can do. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking gargoyle. Part, let's be honest. We can do it in which case, I would do. I would go down the the Seth Rogen, Kristen Wiig kind of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Half. Um, as opposed to, but yeah, Phoebus. Anyway, Phoebus. What are we saying? He's, um, he's dashing. I've just got a look. At, I can't remember what he I looks like. I don't remember like. Phoebus at all. Okay, <laughs> Kevin Klein played him in he the was, original. He was played by <laughs> Kevin Klein. Yeah, he was voiced by Kevin Klein. Yeah. Um, Phoebus. Do you remember basically... what he looks? He was like the jester. No, no, no. Phoebus. Oh was, no. Yeah. Oh, he's the, the yeah the guy. shitty love interest that no one cares about. <laughs> he <laughs> is a character who. Um, is uh, head of the uh, army, or like he's the captain. Um, so specific. So he uh, has an obligation to follow the the um, laws of of the country and laws of Frollo specifically. Um, but he deep down is like, no, I don't, um, I don't like any of this. I I don't like like the uh, yeah. The fact that we're like rounding up gypsies and arresting them and potentially killing yeah. them and stuff, I'm not game for it. Um, and then he meets up with Esmeralda and falls in love with Esmeralda. And then there's a bit of a love triangle thing because Cosimoda yeah. loves Esmeralda as well. Ultimately, she ends up with Phoebus. Um, so it's got to yeah, be a Let's be honest, who would fucking go at like, so, let's we're, be so we're talking about Don- fucking ugly, <laughs> uh, darn good looking, but with a conscience that Channing Tatum. Like, I don't think I don't think it needs to be dumb good looking. I think it's pretty okay. smart. Yeah, he's okay. quite intelligent. He's a sensible human being. Yeah, oh. I think he's a nice bloke. Um, he's just he's military. Like, you know, he's quite straight edge. Likeable, I think, is just the word yeah. as well. Likeable. We need a likeable actor. Likeable um, guy. Cool. Older as well. Late Chris late twenties. Yeah. Chris Evans, maybe a bit Chris too Evans. old. I, I maybe. Okay. You maybe. want to skew younger? A little bit younger. A little bit younger. What we're we thinking. Uh, Taron Edgerton. Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just looking at my DVDs, trying to like. Oh, that's helpful. Look at someone. Uh, 
Um, uh, yeah, quite. He's a big guy, blonde. He needs to look good, blonde, which is important. Yeah, yeah that's not easy to do, actually. It's hard to pull off. Mm. Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Fucking him in targets. Hell. He looked gorgeous, blonde. Yeah, he looked great, blonde. <laughs> um. Oh God, come on! And it's got to be like pretty, like muscular as well, like not too skinny. Yeah. But most like, actors can after all pull that off. What did you say him? No, Paul Rudd. Most too, actors can too. get big. I didn't say Paul Rudd. You fucking no, Cam- idiot. Cameron said Paul Rudd. Oh, well, Cameron's a fucking idiot. <laughs> what about um, Miss Mr. Chris Hemsworth? Yeah. How about Ansel Elgort? Ansel Elgort. If he put a bit I'm of literally a... looking at a list. I mean, Ansel Elgort's a bit of a touchy subject right now. Is he? Yeah. What happened? Uh, he's been he's been done. Well, he's been like allegations of sexual assault. Oh, okay. um, Disney's not going to touch that. <laughs> so he uh, he's currently fighting that. He says he didn't do it. So don't put it out at the moment. Who knows? Let's but... have a... looking at a list of actors. <laughs> Is Henry Cavill too old? Nicholas Holt. What about Nicholas Holt? Oh, Nicholas Holt. What a shout. I think that's a really good shout. That's he's got the look. Shout. He's got blonde. He's got blue eyes, so he could pull off blonde quite easily. Yeah. He'd need to beef up a bit, I think. He can, though. He's he's beef. He's yeah. beefed up yeah. a bit. Yeah, we've seen him. Yeah, he's beefed up before. We've seen him. Yeah. The beef. I think yeah. he, he, can, he can have a likeable intensity as well. So He can, think, yeah, uh, yeah. Halters is a fucking shout. I'm keeping this list open because it's going to be very handy come the next few films. <laughs> what list have you got? Just, just... It, is, it is on, it is a list of the 25 best actors in their 20s. Oh. There you go. Brilliant. <laughs> shout. <laughs> um, it's in his 20s. Christ. Yeah. Well, I don't when, when the list was made. Ah, okay. 2018. So he might no longer, he could be in his Christ, he's 30 by now. He's a young guy. I put him as older just because he was in, like, first class. Yeah, but he started very young, didn't he? He started his first yeah. couple of things when he was very young. So. Oh, I get yeah. it. I mean, About he's... a boy, skins, they were all much yeah. younger. Um, yeah, I think Nicholas Holt is an absolute shout. Yeah, he was 28 in 2018. He's now 30. Okay. But still looks young. And 30's mm-hmm. about right. If you're a captain of the army, you're, not, you're 30 at least. Yeah. It's taking 10 years to get there. Let's be honest. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Nicholas right. Hart. Mr. Phoebus. Nice. Mr. Phoebus. So, if we want to run this down then quick, in our live-action version of Hunchback Notch Darm, imagine that you've just sat down, you've just seen the Disney logo, all of a sudden, boom, you see the fucking Notre Dame's towers over the clouds. It kind of steeps in, it keeps seeping in, and all, all of a sudden... Them. <laughs> and all of a sudden, lo and behold, there's Quasimodo. The camera pans around. You see his face. You go, "Oh, it's Taron Egerton." Taron Egerton. Well, we don't know. That, we don't even know. Screen. I think the prosthetics that good that we don't even know it's him. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's why his name. That's why his name comes up on the screen. Yeah. His name yeah. Comes just up. in case. And, <laughs> Everyone's Taron squinting the eyes. Quasimodo. <laughs> uh, Taron we've Egerton. got <laughs> Ryan. What's Esmeralda again? Ah, uh, I've forgotten her name. Well, right, so that's Esmeralda. <laughs> Mahout. Her no, second name's Mahout. Mahout. Uh, Phoebus is going to be Holt. And Frollo is going to be Grant. Grant. And I think we throw in Seth Rogen, Christian Wigg, and James Franco as the Gargoyles. Yeah. I think that's a good free word. I think that's good. Yep. I think we got it. That's there we go. Show. So, if you imagine when uh, they announce uh, the cast of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or when they announce the cast of The Lion King and all that and they have those posters and they have all the faces and the names that they're going to portray and stuff, that is the Hunchback of Notre Dame one. Categorically, no I think we should make it it and try and make it go viral and get loads of views. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So, that's Hunchback and Notre Dame, down. It's going to be so disappointing when Disney actually announces the cast. And, it's and like, the, they're no all near as good nothing. as list. Exactly. We're yeah. going to slate better, it hard. It better be as good. It better be as good. Yeah. Right, what but one's next? The one we didn't think of, you know? Mm, yeah. Uh, and oh, I think it's worth mentioning that if anybody listening or watching has their own ideas, 
Yeah. Pop, pop them in the comment. Yeah, go for it. And then share it. <laughs> uh, so, um, Ryan, um, let's go. Me next, are we? Right, yeah, left to right on my screen. Okay. So, what film do you have in mind? What have you brought to the table today? For I us have to gone up? for the 1985 coming of age masterpiece that is The Breakfast Club. There we go. Right. So as a quick rundown of the characters, we have Emilio Estevez playing the, the jock character. Andrew Clark, the athlete. Andrew Clark, the athlete. We have Judd Nelson, is that his name? Yep. Um, playing the, the, uh, the John bum. Bender as the criminal. You've got to use this. It's important because it's in the letter they use those words. I'm, I'm trying to remember the words. <laughs> the bum. They put the, 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 the sportman. <laughs> The bum. <laughs> we have a Molly Ringwald playing the uh, Claire Standish, the the bitch, Claire, as the princess. The princess, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we have Danny Poody playing Arbed. <laughs> we have. Um, uh, yeah, and Anthony so, Michael Hall as Brian Johnson, the brain, the and Ali Sheedy brain. as Alison Reynolds, the basket case. Yeah, and then we have the the head teacher. Yeah, who we can do if we get again, same as the gargoyles. If we get to him, we'll do. All right, cool. So I think the first one we should go for is Emilio Estevez. Who who we think who are we changing him up for? So he's the the, the character again. He's a bit of a heart of gold, um, uh, but throughout the project throughout, throughout the project throughout the film you see that um he's not entirely happy with the fact that he's a jock he actually uh he's a troubled really, individual yeah he, he's been worked Pushed pretty hard by his, by his parents and whatever yeah so um, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a really good opportunity to get some tv actors on the big screen oh david you sound like you got an idea I don't have an actual. No, that's just, just, okay, just opening it up brilliant. by saying like this could be where we start picking out some of our favourite TV actors because a lot of a lot of good actors probably start out on TV. This is a really good time if we want just to nab a couple from there. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great que- That's a great idea. Um, so his character would be uh, Jockey. Um, a bit of a closed book, but ultimately could open up and be a bit more emotional, emotionally charged character. So has to have some sort of acting chops about him. Mm-hmm. Um, Taron Egerton. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I'd, I'd say he was getting a bit too old, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to have that raw youth, and he's, well, he's, he's, he's used all of his raw youth. thing yeah. is, in, in the original, two of them were uh, oh. um, Molly Ringwald and... No, Molly Ringwald and Anthony Michael Hall were both 16 and 17, I think. The rest were all in their early 20s. Yeah. Like 22 to 25. Yeah. So you can get people who play young. For sure, I do fun. like the the mod the modern day thing of actually casting the right ages though, because I think yeah. uh, back in yeah. the '80s that was a thing that wasn't really the case. They would always cast older than yes. their ages. Um, I think it's starting to get more to a point um, that you know we've seen it with Spider Man and and various other films where it's like let's cast yeah. appropriately, um, and it's actually been to its betterment. Um, so let's find a different uh, list. Not, uh, not that we're ever going to get better actors than the ones from the original Breakfast Club, but no. Um, but let, I think we're supplying this as a universe where this film is being made now. Yeah, it yeah, was never yeah, made sure. before. It's being, you know, I think with Hunter Dragon Notre Dame, we're going on the Disney live action thing, but I think this one we should treat it of like the film was never made. It's being made now. With it's being made now. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, I like that. Um... <sighs> What about for uh, I don't know if he's too old for for Judd Nelson's um, bum character? Uh, <laughs> I wonder if a sort of Jack O'Connell type. Is too he old. too old though? He's too old. He's got to be like nearly thirty now, isn't he? Oh, oh hell yeah! He's probably yeah, in his thirty. Way too but, old. <laughs> but I, I wonder if he can like be play younger. I, I feel like it would be a Jack O'Connell type. You just days. pitched casting the correct ages and then went so far the other I, way. <laughs> I know, I, I know. <laughs> I know, but I feel like he could play young. I don't know, though. I don't know. 
What, what what's the list saying? What I've got, got. I've currently got the top one hundred up and coming teen and young actors of twenty nineteen. Okay. Cool. What have we got? We got basically the cast of Stranger Things. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Oh, yeah there's Which there's a shout for in there that could definitely do it. I, yeah. I know what I. You know what, Emilio Estevez's character, Dacre Montgomery. Which one's that? The guy who plays the the blonde the blonde motherfucker in uh, series two and three, the bully. Okay, I think he's old though, isn't he? Yeah, but he's still playing a teenager yeah, in Stranger yeah. Things and yeah, getting true. away with it. No, he would work. He even looks a bit like him. He does. And he's also a really nice guy and he's a good actor. Um, and he, you know, I've seen him in things where he doesn't play the arsehole and he's actually very likeable. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think... true. I've seen him in stuff where he plays quite, you know, down to earth characters. Mm-hmm. That's a good shout. It's a good shout. Yeah. And he's up and coming as well. I think he's a good yeah. shout. Yeah. Um, also, I wonder, um, I think we should go for a bit of multiculturality in, in this as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. The, um, yeah the... I was thinking for the basket case, Daphne Keane. Daphne Keane. As Daphne in Keane. Logan. Yeah, Logan. Is she, how old like, is she now? I think she's like 15, 16 now. She's yeah. in Dark Materials, isn't she? And yeah. She's, um... That was just a name that came to head. It's not Basket perfect. Case. Either her or um, Anya Taylor Joy, is it? Oh yeah, and Anya Taylor Joy. That would be cool. I, I mean, I like her also. Maybe for the uh, for the, the other the one posh, as well. Yeah, she could head. do both. She could do either. Yeah. Uh, who is the girl who plays um, in it and it chapter two? The girl in those the girl films. in that. There's the only the girl. one girl, I think. Um, there is just the girl. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't I can't remember her name. Yeah. Beverly Marsh is played yeah. by... Um, I don't know her name either. She's really good, though. Yeah, she's really yeah. good. I think that might be a shout. Yeah, yeah. You know who else I like? Is that girl from um, Afterlife, the, the young journalist in Afterlife. No, she's too old. She's too old. She's too. I know. Old. She's. I, know I think she's she... about for some time. But I think the actress up. is like thirty. She looks well young though. Does she? Yeah. I think she looks oh, like our yeah. age. She looks our age. Did they all have to be in the same year in the Breakfast Club? I think they were. I think they played fast and loose. I think some of them were like freshmen, and some of them were. Yeah. I think John Bender was meant to be the eldest. I think. I think he was like right. senior year. Mm-hmm. So we're looking. No, I think they're in. I mean, thanks for chiming in. But, <laughs> but I think, I think, I don't think they ever specify that they are. I don't um, know if they do or not. I can't. I can't. I, I don't, don't know, know if either. they do or not. If if they did, that that gives us more scope to play with. Yeah, but even then, the scope, is, the scope is high school. You're you're fifteen to eighteen. Yeah, that's it. It's not much scope. <laughs> Yeah, less yeah. scope than in a British scope. But I, I, high but school is... I, what I mean is, we could have a thirteen-year-old actor that can play fifteen, and we can have a twenty-five-year-old yeah. actor who can play eighteen. Like it just broadens the whole thing. Yeah, I don't but... think it ever. I don't think they ever specify. They just say they're at school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who would be Anthony Michael Hall? Because Anthony that, Michael, that, we haven't cast that... any yet. Can we before we move, can we just settle on some? <laughs> we fucking... so we've got we've got Dacre. We've got, okay, yeah. So we've got Daker as the athlete. Yeah. That's done. That's settled. Don't worry <laughs> about that. That's yours. Do you want to gamble and go for... <laughs> I think Anya Taylor-Joy for the princess. I think she'd do I, that. I think that's yeah. a wicked idea. Yeah. Um, it's a wicked idea. Maisie Williams? Too old now. Oh, she, you know, she looks young. She could do the basket case one quite well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fuck it. Yeah. I like <laughs> it. She's not yeah. that old. Obviously. She's not. She's younger than us. Yeah. She's yeah, like she's 23, I think. 23, 24. Maybe. Something like that. I think, I think she could play uh, Ali yeah. Shady. Yeah, quite definitely. Well. So then we've got... So we've got Bender and... 
Brian left, so Anthony Michael Hall. So we need a, a slightly nerdy looking chap slash yeah. woman. It could be a girl. You don't. We could change it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Simon Bird. Simon Bird. Yeah. What a so... fucking what he is like thirty. He's I think he's more. I think he's like mid thirties. I, yeah. yeah. I think he was thirty when they did the in between. Yeah, I think they were like. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, but he looked sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> Um. <laughs> he does look fucking old now, though. You're right. Um, I was throwing names out to fill the uh, air while we're thinking. Yeah. Uh, I think I this. know. I think I know who could be Judd Nelson. But Go again, it, it it again it plays off of the fact that you'd have to, much like Judd Nelson was a bit too old. Uh, he was the eldest old. of them. Yeah. Um. I wonder if this one would work if you younged him down a little bit, but I think this is perfect, is Evan Peters. Ooh. Who's that? Quicksilver. From American Stories. American Animals. I could see that. I could see that. I can see oh, I that. I think he'd be wicked. Yeah, he could play down quite easy. Why do we just entirely cast with really old people and use de-aging technology? <laughs> on all of them. On the whole film. Just get the original <laughs> cast and de-age. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> yeah, well, are we talking about this for so long when we could have just done that all along? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this format's stupid. We could have just done that all along. <laughs> um, and, oh, the, uh, um, the, the girl from It is Sophia Lillis. Okay. I think. I think that's her yeah. name. Sophie. Yeah, I yeah. think she could play Anthony Michael Hall. I think you could. Oh, I think that's fucking genius. Yeah. You could twist that, and she could be the brain. She she yeah. would be really good brains. She could do a brain, yeah. Anthony. Anthony Michael. Anthony. <laughs> she gets annoyed when I say Anthony. <laughs> I might have to hear another Anthony, but I'm not hearing one. Yeah. Okay. Some Anthony's okay. go by Anthony. Some Anthony's go by Anthony. Let's not, you know. Let's... Oh, you know, you know Swings what? It, and roundabouts. It, it's it's tomato tomato. It's Anthony Anthony. Let's move it's, on. It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So I think that's that sounds like a pretty solid cast yeah. we've got going on here now. Yeah. So um, anyone the for the five. teacher, top of the head, who would you go for the teacher? Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, who would I go for? What, I can't just fucking the, the teacher just, character. You just get Greg Davis. You just get <laughs> Greg Davis. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm that, thinking of the character in um, Breakfast Club. I'm getting the one between, from Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's mixed up. I'm pretty what sure the same guy. What does he do in Breakfast same Club? Same actor. I'm pretty sure. But, but what does he do in it? Like he's, what, he's there. He's running the detention, but then he buggers off and just hangs around Lynn's office. Yeah. And then they um, run around and he tries to catch them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think mean, yeah, it's the same actor. Part. I'm pretty sure not it's the same actor part. as the guy from Ferris Bueller. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the guy in Ferris Bueller is called Jeffrey Jones. Maybe it's maybe it's not the same guy. Yeah. Up, Jeffrey, um, how we how we spelling Jeffrey? J E double F R E Y. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> oh. You right. talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, Callum and I will carry on. <laughs> you watched Brooklyn Nine Nine yet, Callum? I do not know. I've seen the odd. I've seen the odd episode. Okay. What, what have you got do from you there? Know who I'm talking about when I say Kevin, Captain Holt's husband, because I yeah. think the actor there could be a good shout. Shit. What well, what's, what's the actor's name? I don't know. That's why it's annoying. <laughs> what else? Is, oh, what the fuck is he in? He's in the good place as well, but I don't think you've seen so, that. No. 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 Oh, he's in all sorts of little things. Hold on, let me let me look him up. Let me look him up. Okay. Um, For anyone who's hello. just joined in, like Ryan here, then uh, you'll uh, be updated by us telling you that David is currently looking for some names. Yeah, that's, uh, what Mark dead, that's what the dead. I'm is. quite married to Greg Davis, if I'm honest. <laughs> I don't Got- think- I don't think he works with how American we've made the rest of it. It could be a teacher from somewhere else. Teachers don't have to be from. No, I know, but I don't. Think <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I don't think seems... I don't think we're overly American. I mean, Dacre Montgomery is Australian. Yeah. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy is Welsh. You know, we've got yeah. some. Uh, 
they've got some multiculturality in there. I so wouldn't say work. they'd all be doing American accents. No, that's a very good point. It's a is multicultural this, school. We could do a British remake of. <laughs> we haven't got any. We've only got one British person. Speaking right. of um, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, what about a a, 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 a Terry Holt. Crews type? Oh, I was going to go for this. <laughs> I think Terry Crews is too likable. Yeah. Too likable. I think Captain Holt, when he plays Stern, mm. would be better. See, I was thinking of the actor who plays Kevin. Captain Holt's husband. Oh, oh, yeah, that could work. Yeah. Either right. of those could work. His name is Mark yeah. Evan Jackson. He's in loads. Yeah, he is in a lot of things. He's the right. he's the teacher. He's the head teacher in the new Jumanji movies. There you yep. go. All right, so he's, go. Got, he's got head teacher experience. <laughs> he's got I teacher think, acting experience. I think you right, hit the nail on the head. Jump Street as well. <laughs> yeah, he just plays teachers. So why not get him in? Perfect. But also have like a cameo of like at the end of the film he leaves and gets in the car with Captain Holt. Like he comes to pick him up <laughs> with perfect. Cheddar. That's so perfect. it's a joint universe. That's yeah. great. Yeah. There we go then. Right. So Cast. if we were to do if we were to do a rundown then, we're yeah. thinking of the poster here. Who have we got? It's the beginning of the Breakfast Nine Nine cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Let's run run down the names and their new cast. Okay, orders, good so. thing we didn't cast Jeffrey Jones because he's on the sex offender registry. Wow. Well, he was in 2010. Well, there we go. What, so do they think we didn't cast it after good behaviour? I don't know. Is, is there a limitation? I don't know if you're, if you're oh, on well, it for done. life. I don't know. anyone in five years. We'll remove you from this. Well, I don't know how it Still... works, David. I've never been on it. Oh, you know what? No, that's actually going to be a good idea. I know a great head teacher. Um, could be Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Because that, then that would be like closer to Jeffrey Jones, wouldn't it? It'd be like very similarly cast. Well, we don't know. You can get on the sex offender industry for various things. You might have just pissed in public. Yeah. Yeah, or done a Pee Wee Herman. You know. Yeah. They're like, the, you know. They're the levels. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Emilio Estevez. Who have we got? Dacre Montgomery. Uh, Dacre Montgomery. Yeah. Is it Dacre or Dacre? <laughs> Who cares? Judd Nelson, we have Evan Peters. Evan Peters. <laughs> Molly Ringwald, we have Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah. That's probably Anthony up. Michael That's Hall, we have Sophia Lillis. 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 It's not even that obscure name, Callum. No, it's really not. <laughs> Lillis. Um, and yes. who's the other one we're missing here? Um, uh, it was um, Alan Sheedy. Yeah, it was um, it was Macy Williams. Macy Williams. Yeah. Macy Williams. Oh, with, we've another British uh, actor. Yeah, we've got more with, British actors than American. <laughs> yeah, with the Brooklyn Nine Nine guy. With the yeah, <laughs> Holt's husband teacher. from Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> Holt's husband. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's I think that's in the film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine guy. Um. I think that's wicked. I think that's another yeah. solid I think we've recast. It. Boom. Stamp of approval. Mark Evan Jackson. If this ever happens and they do cast any of those people, we deserve some money. Yeah. <laughs> I would have thought so. I would have thought so. Mm. Um, Crazy. What film's next on the list, uh, David? What have you got, right. what have you got so ready for my, us? So my original one was something very similar. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to switch it up and go for my backup one, which is uh, a film that you wouldn't believe is actually 18 years old. And that's The Born Identity. I was going to say, I would, I would believe that. Yeah, would, same, actually. As you told us earlier. <laughs> Even oh. then, I would have said about 15 years old by now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it just surprised me because, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah. Time, so eh? If we, if we could along. remake The Born Identity today, who would we... Who are we? So who are we? Who? What characters are we doing? I assume we're doing Matthew Damon. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, so, the uh, woman. We need to replace Jason Bourne, who is yep. played by Matt Damon. We need to find someone to play Marie Kreutz, who is played by Franca Patent. Uh, let's go with Chris Conklin. Cooper. Yeah, he plays Alexander Conklin. And let's replace Nikki Parsons because Julia Stiles is in most of the films. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll tell you, four, are we going to do Brian Cox as well? Yeah, let's do Brian Cox as well. Who okay. Plays Abbott, the guy above Conklin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clive Owen's also in the first one. I forgot about he, that. He is. And Walton, is Walton Goggins is in the first one. <laughs> as just research tech. He's just got a little a little part in it. Bless yeah. him. He's been around for a lot longer than I realised. There's a lot of people floating around. Uh, yeah. Identity. Not stuff mm. but let's start with Big Boy. Big Boy Born. Yeah. Big Man Matt Damon. Yeah. Who who can do it? Who can, who's a modern day Matt Damon? A modern day Matt Damon, eh? Yeah. Mm. It's weird because sort of action heroes aren't really a thing anymore. Yeah. Well, I've said Matt Damon was a was an action hero when he took this role. I, I exactly. agree, but there's not many people who like who go for that just action. You know what I mean? Most of them are multifaceted. So none none spring to mind. I'm sure many could do it. I think you're doing the Born Identity a disservice. He's there's he's a very multi layered character. He kills people with a pen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've forgotten who I am. Stab, stab. That's the film. Um, wow. That's, that's <laughs> pretty shocking. Uh, they're okay. Trying... I don't love them. They're good. They're good. Um, uh, I'll throw a couple of names out that come to mind. He was quite young when he did it, wasn't he? Like, he was yeah, like relatively. Late okay. 20s? He'd been in a few things by that point. Yeah, he'd done Good Will Hunting. Oh, yeah, he'd done, like, Kevin Smith movies and and that. Yeah, but but they were very young when he did those. Yeah, I think he must have been, like, mid to late 20s when he did The Bourne. So I feel like it's not completely out of the realms to say ideas like... If you say Taron Egerton, I'm going to... No, I... I was thinking more along the lines of, like, uh, Dylan Thomas or uh, Logan Lerman. Like, is it Dylan? Is that his name? Dylan, the guy from uh, Maze Runner? Ooh. The lead I actor? Know. I don't know. Sounds he's a very, he's a very energetic and uh, he did a film called American uh, Assassin as well. A few years ago with Michael Keaton. I can't was, think uh, Matt Damon was 32 when he did Born Identity. 32? Well, bugger me. He was born in 1970 and released in 2002, so he was... Yeah. Probably close 30, to 30 30. when they filmed it, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, bugger me. Yeah. yeah. How old is Logan Lerman? <laughs> Logan Lerman. <laughs> Logan... Who's Logan Lerman, Cameron? Lerman. Logan Lerman is the guy from Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yes. He was born in 92, so he is 28. Eight. eight. Okay, so he's closing in on for eight. What about Dylan, Dylan Thomas? Dylan Thomas. I think that's his second name. No, that is not the Dylan Thomas you're talking about because he died in 1953. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get okay. it. It's not yeah, Dylan can Thomas. You, can you search the Maze Runner? Maze Runner, okay. And then tell me who the lead is in it. I think I'm glad they prepared a fact-checking station for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, Maze Runner 2014. Oh, his character's name is Thomas. He's called Dylan O'Brien. <laughs> that was that was pretty good of me. Yeah, uh, yeah how old that guy? How Dylan that O'Brien guy? is. He was born in 1991, so he's 29. Ooh. He's older than Logan Lemon. Okay. In in the film American Assassin, he shows his kind of uh, brutal, like yeah, brute force kind of action that uh, I think Bourne is now synonymous with. Uh, I think. He's not quite as charismatic or likable as Matt Damon, but he's definitely a... But let's be honest, in The Born Identity, especially the first one, he's not... He just mopes about, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a bit mopey, isn't it? You don't... You like him because of his situation, not necessarily because of him. Yeah. He's a very sensitive moper. Yeah, Yeah, he is. He is. I feel like it's on The Born Identity way more than it deserves. (laughs) But The Born Identity is very good. Yeah, it is. I agree. the Born Supremacy and uh, Ultimatum are even better. Ult- Ultimatum is yeah. the Ultimatum is action movie the top of, tier. of the yeah, old, of Callum the, uh, just said the best action movie of the noughties. Of the mid noughties. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> would find it difficult to disagree, to be honest. Yeah, but earlier you argued that <laughs> I said action movie and you were like, I think it's more than just action. There's more, there's more to it than just <laughs> Oh, I love this. I'm watching this. Like, I wish I had some popcorn or something. 
<laughs> right. Um, I'm happy with Dylan O'Brien. I think right. he looks the part, looking at him. Do you think that he has enough star power? Uh, well, did Matt Damon? I would he built argue. a little bit by yeah. that point. He, he had enough. Well, Maze Runner was pretty big. I think I, I would like to say that um, Born Identity was the star-making film for Matt Damon. I don't think he was the star for <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Good Will Hunting made him a an actor In, to yeah, watch, like a, not an action star. No. I would enjoy um, seeing a trailer that uh, so starring Dylan O'Brien, you know, the Maze Runner guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's also, no, he was also in Team Wolf. He was Team Wolf in the MTV series Team Wolf, okay. which was quite yeah. big with the teens. So he's got the young audience, and it was pretty big with the wolves as well. Yeah, wolves loved it. Yeah, yeah, the teens, the wolves. Well, we, don't get, we don't get enough wolves in the cinema these days. So. No, that's true enough. That's true enough. All right, so, let's go. For it. And he let's... was the voice. Of, he was the voice of Bumblebee in Bumblebee. Oh, well, there you go. That's that's facts. <laughs> facts. <laughs> Straight facts. <laughs> so great. now you can do voices. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. It's coming together. <laughs> right. So plenty of uh, awards as well. He's done quite well. All right. Mainly his choice yeah. awards, but you know, you sort of start something. <laughs> Let him have yeah. it. Let him have it. You know what? Let's reshape the Bourne series then for a teen audience. Because at the moment, it's very much a dad film. It's true. You know what I mean? So we need to skew it a little bit more teeny. Yeah, get the young people involved. Yeah, only slightly, but right. yeah, we don't go too far one way. Right. Who In next? which case, who would be Frank? Uh, whatever her name is. Bent. Yeah. Marie Kreutz. Well, who would be her? And so she she is a character he like falls in love with very quickly. Um, well, you see, yeah, but. That's because she's like the only person he knows. Yeah, yeah, and no, like there's something about her that he he does fall in love with and and he connects with, I think. Yeah, and then her her subsequent death at the beginning of the second movie really uh, affects him um, up until the end of the like, series. He goes mental in the second. One. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's, it's not like, a character that is very lovable that some yeah. that people can fall in love with very quickly. Yeah. Um, Somebody down on their luck, basically. Like, yeah, yeah. She, she's got money issues she's struggling um mm. 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 i would like to say relatively plain faced as well like i don't think it should be like an absolute stunner like an absolute gorgeous yeah. woman uh, more more plain faced um really? but beautiful but beautiful still um Taron Egerton. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, I've just looked up actresses under thirty. Yeah. And we have got lots. There's loads. Yeah, there are <laughs> there's so many. Well, what's the girl from so Park called? Caitlin Deaver or something? Kate Deaver. Caitlin Deaver. Caitlin Deaver from Booksmart. Yeah. Well, uh, no, she's maybe too, not. No, too it's young. With, too... It's him as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be a bit weird. <laughs> uh, well, she, I think she's older what than. What about she's Abigail been. Breslin? Ooh. she's now yeah l- mid twenties. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She's she's endearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but can also you know pull out the charms if she needs to. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, I'm literally going for this list. Saoirse Ronan, about... Saoirse Ronan is too big. She's too. Yeah. Saoirse what about big. um Margaret Corley? Who? Margaret. Uh, what's that? What's that woman's name? Um, ah, fuck. The woman from uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Uh, Adam. No. Uh, um, Andy McDowell. Her daughter. Andy McDowell's daughter. I didn't know she had. Yeah, Margaret Corley. She's in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She plays um. Pussy or Kitty Cat, or whatever her name is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That could work. Could work. I've seen her as the kind of. Um... Yeah, that's an interesting one, actually. Yeah, I've seen it before in in like an action movie. I can't remember what the film was, but like like the guy is doing the action. She's not the uh, she's not the damsel in distress as like, as per, but she. Um get suckered into these adventures and I think it's similarly what happens to her character in Born Identity I can't remember what film that is 
Um, but she played it off like well enough. I think she might be a shout. Mm. Mm. Yeah, see it. See it happening. Yeah, relative unknown as well. I know what it was. It, the film was the the Death Note remake. The Death Note remake. She was absolutely fine in it, regardless of what you might say about the film. Um, just looking at some more possibles. Let's have a look. I'm struggling with this one. <laughs> yeah. Fair fucks to these casting directors. They they have a job on their hands. <laughs> They do, don't they? There's a lot. You've got so many faces. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, who, who else are we trying to recast here? I want to have a think. Well, well you've got um, you got Chris Cooper. Julius, yeah, Chris Cooper. Who was, um, he's he's the head of the Treadstone project. Yeah. In the first one, let me find out. Yeah. He's not well, really we need somebody head. who can convincingly make lots of terrible decisions. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Kevin Spacey. Oh, I had think. <laughs> I think. No, no, I don't think anything. No. <laughs> I think he needs to be slightly older than than the guy who plays Bourne. He needs to be yeah. senior. Yeah, yeah. But not yeah, too absolutely. senior, because then you've got to have yeah, Brian talk- Cox. I think we're talking be even years. more senior. So you need someone like forty. Forty. Like Wait, 40 you, want Chris Hems- you want Chris Hemsworth? 40. Don't, you don't bully me about my speech. <laughs> David. I thought you were just doing another Anthony. No, thing. that was me trying to talk. Okay. What about... Um, oh, I'm going to have to... Oh, God. Come on. I'm going to see if I can pull this DVD down without pulling the rest of my DVDs oh, down. Christ. What about... Um, uh, Joe Pantoliano? Joe Pantoliano. Remind me. Doesn't he, he plays the bastard in the Matrix? The bastard in the Matrix. Isn't he also the guy who runs the unit in Bad Boys? He is, yeah. I, I think that's a negative connotation that we want to avoid. W- why? Oh, he's the one. He's in fucking Baby's Day Out. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's he's a he's a pretty uh, intense actor. He is. He can be. I don't buy it. He's, he's also a, in The Sopranos. Makes too many jokes in everything he's in. <laughs> yeah, he does have a, the lean towards. People are going to watch it and then wonder why they're not laughing. I don't know. <laughs> he also was recently in a car crash. What about... Um, <laughs> he's Michael... recovering at home. What about yeah. Michael Shannon? Michael Shannon's Shannon. a good shout. That could work. I yeah. thought I said Michael Fassbender and I thought that could also work. Like... Yeah, Fassbender. Fassbender. Yeah. I think really... Fassbender would be quite good with Brian Cox part, actually. I think Fassbender yeah, so, could pull like... off like the genius in charge of it all, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. See, the Brian Cox character needs to be a sneaky bastard. Yeah, who isn't afraid to shut an entire branch down and murder people to hide it. I think Michael Shannon's a good shout because he was really good in um, Shape of Water as well. Yeah. yeah. I would say a similar sort of character. Oh, he was also really good in everything he's ever done because <laughs> he's amazing. He, he is. He... <laughs> Except Man of Steel. Honestly. Well, he, well he's, he's one of the better things about that film. <laughs> he is. I can go back to that film now that I know he's a good actor and be like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing he's doing as he's told in the best yeah. way that he can. I'm not gonna yeah. judge him for no, it. Can't can't hurt him for that. So we set on Michael Shannon for tell somebody that he's gonna find Superman. Yeah, and, and he does. does actually find him. So he follows can... through on his promise to man of his word. Fair, <laughs> fair fucks to him. That's good. Uh right, yeah, are we, are we, all right. Are we locking that one down then? I think so. I've been scrutinising my DVDs, like looking at for names, but I don't think I'm going to find anyone better than Michael Shannon. No. Yeah. So what Michael about, Shannon as Alexander Conklin. What about uh, Ray Fiennes for someone? I think he'd be Brian Cox's. He'd be the. Yeah. 
He's too. Oh, he's no. He's too clean. Yeah. Yeah, we want we want somebody with a bit of dirt. So it looks about, like they've been through it. Yeah. What about David Lynch? <laughs> Just getting fucking David Lynch in there. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. I need to stop looking up there. Sorry, yeah, it. you do because you're getting weird, weird answers. We just get Brian Cox again. I mean, he's always good. We, we just get him back. Brian Cox or Frank Langella. Get one of those guys in there. That's just kind of like old, like just yeah, super intelligent, but real assholes. Al I think kind of Do you know cool. who I think oh, could Pacino. could be the two, the, oh, which one is it? The two the women's, the um, the one who dies, I think maybe Zoe Kravitz, maybe. I think she could do that quite well. I, I love who she is again. Lenny Kravitz's uh, daughter. <laughs> yeah, she's in... She's been in quite a lot. She's uh, the new Catwoman. Yeah. There will be. There's a new Catwoman. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Uh, she was in oh. Fantastic Beasts 2. Yeah, she's in the High Fidelity series. She's the John yeah, she, Cusack she, character. She, she, she does quite a bit. Okay. About Florence, though, we've we've disregarded Florence Pugh, guys. How could we have done that? Ooh, Florence Pugh. How Florence could we have forgotten Pugh. about the Pew? <laughs> pew pew pew. I think she could do um, the other could Julia do Stiles. The Julia Stiles one, yeah. Yeah. If she's going to do either of them, it would be that. I like Zoe Kravitz. I, I dig Zoe Kravitz as well. Yeah, yeah. I, she's she's very likable. Uh, easy to fall in love with her. Um, her death would would uh, cause outrage, I'd imagine. So yeah. uh, I think Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, it's a shout. I like how confident we are in the success of this first film that we've ahead. Oh yeah. Ahead. Oh, just... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Dylan O'Brien. How can we fail? <laughs> yeah, how can we fail with Dylan at the helm? Dylan, don't know his second name, O'Brien. Oh, the only person that would, would guarantee more success would be Taylor Kitsch. <laughs> Get it? Because he wasn't successful at all. Right. So, running back, we've got Dylan Thomas okay. slash O'Brien. In, as Jason Bourne. Yeah. We have got Zoe Kravitz as... Who was the character's name? Murray Coitz. Yeah. We have got Michael Shannon as Alexander Conklin. We've got who did we settle That's on? Real good show. Did we settle on Brian Cox or Brian Cox? Uh, we didn't settle on it because we had too many good names out there. I, I okay, right. This is what we I'm do. I'm going to throw out Mahershala Ali for that character. Fuck it. That's a brilliant shout. He's fucking that is a cracking shout. Fuck. He can I think like it can only be bested friend. by this this name. Instead of Brian Cox, we get the Brian other Brian Cox. Cox. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of Brian Cox, and he's just in there physicist. like being really sweet, but Brian he's like Cox. a nasty bastard, but he's really sweet and soft spoken. To be honest, I think that could work. I don't. <laughs> I think Mahashala is is a perfect shout. Always. Uh, maybe Brian can have a cameo. Yeah. As a scientist, yeah. uh, he can be Brian. He can play as Brian. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going for yeah. Mahershala. I think that's a fun Mahershala one. Ali. Solid. Because uh, yeah. he's threatening when he's silent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. we've Who got else? Florence Pugh as Julia Stiles. Julia Stiles. <laughs> <laughs> Florence Pugh post. plays Julia Stiles, plays whatever the character's <laughs> called. <laughs> Character's called Nikki Parsons. Nikki Parsons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Zoe Kravitz as as the other one. The other one. There we go. Done. Cast. Look at that. Perfect. Look at what we've managed to do, guys. We've managed to cast three of Hollywood's biggest new properties, or old properties, new remakes. Um, and I think together they're probably going to gross seven billion dollars um wow, based that's about entirely off of uh, an average of about choice. two and a half each <laughs> oh, hell yeah yeah i would have thought yeah. so so that was our new format 
three films recast. Anyone who is listening at home, give us your opinions. Give us yeah, what you characters agree, you would disagree. Roles. Um, also, if you like the format, um, just send us some films. Like we can recast films that yes. you guys suggest. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and you know, make sure they're good ones. You know, we don't want to recast. Okay, no. You know what? I've had about enough of these. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a jab at you. That wasn't even a jab. I swear, <laughs> God, it wasn't even a jab. <laughs> I think it was. It wasn't. I'm gonna take it as that. It uh, wasn't. It was fine. It's, it's, it's Born, this narrative, and I like it. Born identity was a great choice. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> fine. It's a good place as any. Thank you for listening to this episode of Whatever We've Been Doing here at Rap Party HQ. We'd like to thank Sam Sargent for supplying the score. To hear the full tracks and more music of the same ilk, feel free to head to soundcloud.com forward slash Sam Sargent and tell him Rap Party sent you, preferably not at gunpoint. While on the internet, it'd help us out if you liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter and kept an eye out for further episodes. Thanks once again for listening and that's a wrap.